right. So uh, this is a video going to be about the force of friction. Hopefully it'll be a pretty quick hitter. Um, I'll try not to ramble on too much. So here, here we go. All right. So the force of friction here. Whoop. All right. So uh, we, we're still talking about blocks on planes. And sometimes we're giving you, as we talked about, you know, like the mass in here. And remember, like if it says kilograms, it's the mass. If it says newtons, it's the weight. All right. That's that's an important differentiation here. So for right now, I'm going to make this uh, kilograms. Now, what is the force of friction? Uh, one important thing, it is an oppositional. It is an oppositional force. Oppositional force. Right, so that means it always opposes the direction of motion. It always goes in the opposite direction. So if an object is going to the right, that means friction whoop, is going to the left. All right. So if I tell you that this block is moving in a particular direction, well, the force of friction will always be in the opposite direction of that. It has an equation. That equation is the force of friction. That's that big F and that little f is equal to this thing, mu, which is a Greek letter and also a Pokemon. Uh, times the normal force. All right. This is why we've been spending all this time talking about the normal force so that we can figure out what friction is. Because frankly, the normal force hasn't mattered at all to us up until this point. Now, what about mu? Mu is the coefficient of friction. It is a relationship between two different surfaces. All right. That is going to tell you about how frictionful it is. It is in your reference table. For example, though, um, you might see in your reference table something like steel on steel. All right, and then it'll say something like 0.57. All right, so no units at all on the coefficient of friction. It is just a number, and 0.57 would be a, a relatively high number. All right, we also have ones like uh, wood on wood. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's something like 0.3. Okay, and again, these are approximations, so the particular piece of steel or the particular type of wood is going to be different, but this is just an idea for us to do some problems, all right? So if we have a block such as this, and I've changed my mind, I'm not going to give you the mass, I'm going to tell you its weight, I'm going to call this 10 newtons. Let's say, let's say we wanted to find the net force, F net is equal to what? Okay, so on this block, and I'm sorry this isn't as fancy as some of the other videos, as I said, quick hitter. All right, so uh, then we have, mm, I don't know, like a, let's say a 25 Newton force going that away. Now what? Okay, well, um, in the past that would be it, right? Because we know two things about when objects are moving along a surface. We know that the sum of the forces, right, the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero newtons. We know that because there is no motion in this up and down plane. All the motion is in this left and right plane. Okay. We also know the sum of the forces in the x direction is all that's left. So we know that that is equal to the net force. So before, when, when there was no friction, this was pretty easy, right? Because what this, this problem would be basically done. This problem would say, well, what forces are in the y direction? Well, those forces are just this one, just 25 newtons, so you're done. But now we have friction, especially if I say, I don't know, that this is a wooden block, and this would be in the form of the question, right? It would say a, a 10 newton wooden block is resting upon a wooden surface, all right? Uh, okay, and this is a wood surface. So now, now what? What do we know? What, how are we going to solve this? Now we know, even though there's doesn't say anything else, except by telling us that we're not ignoring friction in this problem, that there must be an oppositional force. There must be this force of friction that is trying to oppose the direction of motion. It's trying to resist it. It's trying to slow it down, which means I have another force in my x direction now, right? And so it's going to be plus a negative force of friction here. Why negative? Well, uh, we're sticking with our usual coordinate system, which means positive to the right, negative to the left, up is positive, and down is negative, which means the 25 Newton is pointing in a positive direction, and that force of friction is pointing in a negative direction. So how do we find the net force then? Well, we're going to have to find the force of friction, and we're going to have to do that by using this equation right here. We cannot uh, get this any other way, all right? Not in this case, anyway. 
Okay, so uh, so now that means that we are going to have to care about the y direction, which quite frankly often we don't. So let me bring this on down here, all right, and we'll continue and draw our free body diagram. So in pink here we have our force of gravity. Now, as we said before, this is being given to us in newtons, which means it already is the weight. So that is 10 newtons. Yay. Okay. Now, we remember our definition of the normal force, which is that the normal force is always equal and opposite to the amount of force applied to the plane. The amount of force applied to the plane is right here. It's 10 newtons. So the normal force is equal and opposite to that, which means it's also 10 newtons. That's pretty good. So now in red, for no particular reason, we can find the force of friction because we now know the normal force is 10 newtons. It's wood block on a wood plane, so I can look to my reference table, or I can look right here, and say that that is 0.3. So what is the force of friction, you say? Well, the force of friction is 3 newtons. Okay, dokie. So now we're taking a look at this equation again right here. We can duplicate that, bring it all down right here. Okay, that means that we know this value now. Now, this only ever tells us, rather, this equation only ever tells us the magnitude of the force of friction. The direction is going to be up to us, but we know it's always an oppositional force. So now, in this next line here, I can write, well, F net is going to be equal to 25 newtons minus 3 newtons, or plus a negative 3 newtons. So, F net is equal to um, 22 newtons and done. So not too different from problems that we've done before, except instead of me telling you what this force is, you've got to go ahead and uh, find it using the equation that we just learned, which is this one right here. Pretty straightforward, if I do say so myself, and I just did. Okay, so that's that's that one example. Uh, let's try a, uh, a slightly different version that still incorporates that same thing and it is similar to other problems we've seen but there is an added step all right and this is a common uh type of problem so again block on a plane um and i don't know i'll tell you the mass this time i guess for for fun so we'll say a force this way we'll say a 20 newton force okay and a force back this way which is the force of friction. All right. And I'm going to tell you that the object is moving this way at a constant speed. Okay. So the question is, is what is the force of friction? All right. Well, we know that constant speed means equilibrium. Okay. And when you have equilibrium, you know that the acceleration, in other words, the net acceleration is equal to zero meters per second squared. You know that the net force, therefore, also has to be a zero, zero newtons. You know the velocity is constant. Hey, I just said that. That's how we knew the rest of these things. But when one of these things is true, the rest of them is true. This means all forces, all the Fs given, are balanced. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So that means up equals down, left equals right, and so on. So because it says constant speed, it means we're in equilibrium. Because we're in equilibrium, these things right here are true, which means that this force right here, the force of friction, must, I don't know, it looks like a four there, must be 20 newtons. Okay, so if that's all the question was asking, we're done. But the question can go on in that. The question can say, what is mu? What is the coefficient of friction? Which is what mu is. Mu is the coefficient of friction. So following that, we know our equation right here, which is, again, on the back of your reference table. Okay, The force of friction is equal to mu fn. So now we know this is 20 newtons. But what about the normal force? We just put in 10, right? Wrong, right? This is in kilograms, so we can't just put in 10 here. That's a ridiculous thing to say. So we have an additional step here, silly Regans. All right, we know that the force of gravity is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Again, in your reference table, it says G is equal to FG over M. 
but I like writing it this way because it just feels like F equals MA to me. All right. So why am I doing this? I am doing this because I know the normal force is equal and opposite to the amount of force applied to the plane. And what is the force applied to the plane? You ask, it's just the force of gravity. That's the only force we got going on here. So the force of gravity is equal to what? Well, it's equal to that 10 kilograms. Make sure it's in kilograms, not grams. All right, is 9.8 meters per second squared because this only works if it's in kilograms. So that means my force of gravity is 98 newtons. Cool. All right. So now that I know my force of gravity is 98 newtons, that means that I can then say that's the force applied to the plane so that is the normal force mu equals all right and i divide 20 by 98 it's kind of like 20 divided by 100 so i expect it to be 0.2 ish all right and it is 0.2 ish if you want to get crazy you can say 0.204 but why would you do that to yourself um so that's our answer that is the answer to what is mu all right, so like I said, I try to make this a quick hitter. This is a brief overview of friction. Why don't you try some of the problems uh, that are posted in the classroom? Other than that, have a lovely day. Bye-bye.